What's up gang, I'm Raiden Rose. This is a follow-up video to my video from last year on how to block pornography for free to answer some questions that I've been getting over the last year and to provide some additional methods that will work congruently with these that I've already shown you. So first I will show you what I still think is the best method for blocking pornography for free. Then after that I will show you these additional methods that work as backups to protect your loved one from accessing bad stuff and that will allow you to block specific keywords or specific search terms. The first thing that is the best, in my opinion, is this simple DNS script. All right, what you're going to do is you're going to download this. It is a free program. You just need to know if your computer is 64-bit or 86-bit to download the correct installer. All right, if you don't know what that is, odds are your computer is a 64-bit, but what you can do is you hit the Windows key on your keyboard plus X, put them together and hit system. Or you can go to your normal settings. What you're trying to do is you're going to get to this about section. Down here is a system type and it will tell you what bit operating system you have. So you download the installer. You're going to go through the install process. Once it is installed, you're going to see this box. It's going to look slightly different than this, but your goal, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to make it look like I have here. You, this only servers without filter that may be checked if it is you want to uncheck it because you are trying to find servers that have filters next you're going to click on your network card your network connection whether it's ethernet or wi-fi wait for it to turn green and have this little check mark then you're going to go to this middle service section and this slider tab you will be gray like this you need to turn it on so that it is green like this okay Next, you go to Resolvers up here to the right of Main Menu. It's going to be in Automatic Mode as a default. This one right here will be green. And what you are wanting to do is essentially, we don't want it in Automatic Mode because that's just going to go through any server. You're looking for servers that have excellent filters on it. Basically, you're going to need to scroll through here because unfortunately there's not a search option that I have found to find the specific server. But you're looking for servers that have the word family in it okay those are the ones that are most effective at blocking pornographic material so there are some other options you know clean browsing adult or just for security purposes but if you're truly trying to stop access for someone that you love you need to hit the family one okay clean browsing dash family scroll down there's another one somewhere doh dash clean browsing dash family those are the two that are the best. You're going to make sure that those are green. And then the important part is to hit this apply settings button. Otherwise, it leaves it in automatic mode. So you apply the settings. That tells it, I only want you to connect to the internet through these safe servers. Okay. Finally, what's awesome about this program is it has, scroll to the right here a little bit, there is a tab that says domain blacklist. If you don't see that, just click the little settings gear at the top and that brings up a list of the tabs you just need to check mark the one that you want to see so right here show domain blacklist tab and click that all right so there is a blacklist rules here which lets you put in specific websites that it will completely block in addition to going through the safe servers so if there are websites that you think are just a waste of time or that you're worried your kid is going to access inappropriate material through then you type in those websites right there and then again hit the slider bar so that it is green instead of gray this has been the most effective program i have found at stopping access completely the only downside is that it is not password protected so if your child or whoever you're trying to help is tech savvy at all then they'll figure out how to just shut that off so what you need to do next is this second program called my lockbox google my lock download my lockbox it'll pull this site up again i'll have the links down download it go through the download process and you get sorry you will get this little my lockbox free there are paid versions that is a subscription there's a paid version that is a one-time fee which is nice to support these kinds of programs to ensure that they're free for people that maybe can't afford it what this program does is it lets you type in a folder path or drag a folder into the program and it will prevent anyone from accessing the program that has 
that is within that folder without putting in your password. So when you first set this up, it's going to tell you, hey, put in a password, put in a recovery email in case you forget your password. And in this advanced section, this is where you can change that. You can set up auto lock options, um, password here. So type in your new password, confirm the password, and then the email address is for the recovery. If you are self-moderating, you will type in the email address of whoever is kind of your sponsor, or your helper, whether that's your parent or your religious leader, type in their email address. If you are the one moderating for your child or for your friend or something, you're going to type in your email address there so that if you forget the password, it will send a reset option to that email. Again, what you're doing here is you're putting in this folder path to block access to that so that they cannot open the DNS simple script without typing in your lockbox password. Now, this is the path on my computer. It should be the same on yours. If for whatever reason it isn't, you go to this PC and you can type in simple DNS and it's going to pull up. It's going to take a while to load because it's searching your entire computer, but it's going to pull up anything that includes that title. You're going to scroll down to the one there. You're going to scroll down to this one that has the logo with the little shield on it. And you right click that, you right click that folder, and there should be an option that says open file location. So again, then it shows your file location up here. So right now you're in that simple DNS script, 64 bit. You go back to this bitbeans folder. This is where you can drag it. If for whatever reason, yours is labeled differently than mine, but it should be the same. So you put that in the computer, in the program, and you hit lock. Okay. Now, in order to access the simple DNS script, they have to type in the password that you set in order to access it. So the combination of those two programs, simple DNS and my lockbox is what I found to be most effective. The program I found that allows you to block specific search terms is called getcoldturkey.com. So you go here, you're going to hit the download button, and once you download it, you're going to have something that looks like this, okay? Now you're in the blocks category, there will be this thing called distractions. Okay, you click on distractions, there is a website category where you type specific categories that you want blocked. Okay. You hit enter or add and it goes into the list so that that is completely inaccessible. If there are websites that you want to make sure are not blocked by the different filters, then you put it in this website exceptions. What's really cool about this though is that it allows you to block specific key terms or search queries. All right, so you've got to type it in just like this. Okay, star period star backslash or, or forward slash, I guess, star Q equals star. And then you put in the search term that you want blocked, like 18 plus, and then you have to close it off with another star. You can put in, you know, people's names here. See, self moderators kind of know the things that they search for that get them into trouble. And sometimes those things are not completely blocked by category blocks. So this allows you to block the specific search terms that kind of get them in trouble. So for example, you know, 18 plus movies or whatever, you close off with a star and you add it in. Okay, you hit save at the bottom. The other features, so you can go to settings and scroll down. This pause for a cause is kind of funny. The guy has a option when something is blocked that says, hey, you know, if you want to unblock it for 10 minutes, you can donate X dollars to this charity fund and you'll have access for 10 minutes. I blocked that just because for young kids it creates more problems. And then seconds given to re-enable browser extensions if disabled or removed. You have 20 seconds is what I switched it to. Okay, so going back to the blocks, you have this continuous block button. That allows you to set time frames. I don't really use that. If there's stuff that I want blocked, I just want it blocked all the time. Breaks in that time frame, etc. I don't really use that. Okay, this unlocked button is what you want to focus on. You want to make sure this is on. And then when you click on the unlock, 
block, this is how to prevent somebody from just turning off the extension. So right now the default is none. You can set a timer. I don't really recommend time ranges. I don't recommend restart. I don't recommend password protection. That is a feature that is only enabled if you buy the product. And so you can do that. It's pretty affordable, a good way to support, you know, but if you are not able to do that, you can again use that Dropbox program in conjunction with this where that one is free and you can still put a password in there. The other thing that is cool about this, particularly for self moderators, is this random text way to block. So you lock this block unless you type in and you can t pick how many characters of random text the person has to type in before it will unlock this. So you can put in, you know, three, which means it's going to estimate that it'll take you two to five seconds to unlock it. But you can type in 999. You're gonna have to type in the random text stuff to match in order to unlock it. And so if you've got 999 characters that you have to type in, that's gonna take you anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes to unlock it. And that added effort is typically enough to stop people from trying to turn it off. So I recommend this as a free route or use this in conjunction with the lockbox program. Now, what happens if you do lock it? Um, okay, so we'll say, yeah, we're gonna save. Gives you these warnings that like, hey, you can't undo this until you type this in, right? So I lock it. Let's go to the internet, because again, this is an extension. So if you just go, here's the cold turkey stuff right here. So if you turn this off, it's going to take a few seconds for the software program to realize it. And then what it does is it gives you kind of that 20 second leeway and it just shuts off the browser. So if you or the person you're trying to protect tries to just disable that extension, then it will just blocks the entire web browser if you try to turn off the blocking effects, which is a really neat feature. Okay, so then when you go back, when you go back to the internet, you're gonna get a notification that says, hey, you've only got about 20 seconds to re-enable that or else it's just gonna kick you out again. So once you enable the browser again, you've got to make sure that that extension is turned on, otherwise you just can't use the internet at all. Next, the uh, this website that I still can't pronounce, Custodio. It has come a long way. It's done even better at blocking stuff. So I do recommend using that. And then you can still use this solution as well. You're going to go to the start menu. You're going to search for the word shell and it's Windows PowerShell. So right click that, run it as an administrator. It's the one with the little shield on it. When you pull that up, it's going to look like this. This is your PowerShell. You will copy and paste this file path. You paste that into this administrator PowerShell, hit enter, and it's gonna ask you, how do you wanna open the file? Open it with Notepad, okay? It'll look something like this. What this program does, it allows you to tell your computer to block specific things or to force search engines to use the safe search option. So you've got to give a specific code. This code right here is how you block a website. If you don't want your kid to use a specific search, search engine, or if you don't want them on worthless websites, you can put as many of these as you want here. You just hit enter and you're gonna do a new, new thing. Type that code and then whatever the website is that they're wasting time on or that you're worried they're gonna get access to anything bad on, that will block the specific website from being allowed to open. This code right here tells the computer, let them use this search engine, but force it to be in safe mode. All right. When you are done, hit control save. You have to save this in order for it to take effect. If for whatever reason is still not taking effect, just restart your computer and then it will. So that is the next most effective option. Again, it's a little tech savvy, but if you follow these steps, it should work. So those are my methods. If you have specific questions or concerns, let me know in the comments. I will do my best to respond. If you know of a simpler way to that is effective at blocking adult material, let us all know in the comments. I'm sure everybody would love to have a little less technical option than what I've just provided. But as I said before, these are the most effective. And happy internet surfing free from pornographic material. So this one, Truple, this is a paid program. So you may not be interested in it, but I think it just takes a really cool approach to blocking 
pornography because what it does is that essentially the, the device, whether it's the computer or phone or whatever that you are trying to block or protect, it is set up through this to where it will send screenshots every you know five to 30 seconds to another person's device, computer, email, phone, etc. And it will also alert that person if something is coming across. It will also alert the person if there are images or things that look questionable. And so this kind of ensures that self-moderators just are not really tempted because obviously something like this is kind of something that people do in private because they feel shame about it. So if you know that somebody else can be seeing your screen at any given second, uh, you're just not really going to be searching, right? You're not going to go looking for trouble because somebody else could be watching at any moment and they will get notified if there are things that show up as inappropriate. Um, so that's it, guys. Again, I really recommend using them in conjunction. I do it all, essentially. And when you have this many protections on, it really protects. So best of luck. Let me know if you have any questions.